an order of service for noonday. God of resurrection, you have rolled the stone away, and the tomb of our world has been opened wide. With the dawn has come a new creation. Let our celebration today empty our tombs, renew our lives, and release your power. Through the risen Christ we pray. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the 10th chapter of Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was shocked and went away, grieving, for he had many possessions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is no commemoration today, so you're reading a selection from Not in God's Name, Confronting Religious Violence by Rabbi Jonathan Sack. It began with Cain and Abel, and it is happening still. What eventually will kill Abel is Cain. Cain in Hebrew means to acquire, to possess, to own. The Bible says so explicitly. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have acquired a man with the help of the Lord. The significance of this is lost on most translators who read it as made, gotten, produced, created, given life to, and so on. These two miss the point. I have acquired is one of those verbs that, like the narratives analyzed in the book, yield their meaning only in retrospect when we have gone through the entire Hebrew Bible and then return to read the text in the light of all that follows. It was Jean-Jacques Rousseau who unintentionally provided the deepest commentary. In his discourse on the origin of inequality, he writes, the first man who, having fenced in a piece of land, said, this is mine, and found people naive enough to believe him, that man was the true founder of civil society. From how many crimes, wars, and murders from how many horrors and misfortunes might not 
anyone have saved mankind by pulling up the stakes or filling up the ditch and crying to his fellows, Beware of listening to this imposter. You are undone if you once forget that the fruits of the earth belong to us all and the earth itself to nobody. The only word with which a reader of the Bible would disagree would be the last. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24. It does not belong to nobody. It belongs to God. The entire ethical legal principle on which the Hebrew Bible is based is that we own nothing. Everything, the land, its produce, power, sovereignty, children, and life itself belongs to God. We are mere trustees, guardians on his behalf. We possess what we do not own. That is the basis of the infrastructure of social justice that made the Bible unique in its time and still transformative today. Cain represents the opposite. Power as ownership, ownership as power. The Hebrew word Baal, the name of the chief Canaanite deity, has the same range of meanings. The root means to own, to possess, to exercise power over someone or something. That, for the Bible, is the ultimate idolatry. Rousseau was right. Violence begins in competition for scarce goods, of which the first is land. Eve unwittingly gave her eldest son a name that would eventually lead him to murder. Cain represents the idea that what I own gives me power. When I give some of what I own to God in the form of a sacrifice, I am doing so in order to receive in return some of his power. That is pagan sacrifice, a way of propitiating, cajoling, or bribing the gods. That kind of sacrifice God does not accept. The sacrifice he accepts, that of Abram, is one that comes from the humility of mortality. God, I am mere breath, but it is your breath I breathe, not mine. This, as the Bible understands it, is the fundamental conflict within the human condition. The struggle between the will to power and the will to life. Life down here on earth is holy. It is also exceptionally fragile. It is a mere breath. Almost in his last words, Moses tells his people, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set life and death, blessing and curse before you. Therefore, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Murder in pursuit of power while invoking the name of God is sacrilege, and whoever does it, whoever the victim, whatever the faith. That drama is still being enacted today in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Nigeria, Somalia, Libya, and in acts of terror around the world. God does not sanctify the will to power. That is the way of Cain, not of God. When religion turns men into murderers, God replies, The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Not in God's name, by Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As the sun rises higher in the sky, so may the Lord be exalted in our lives. As the spring flowers display their beauty, so may the Lord be glorified in our lives. As the fresh green leaves on the trees announce the spring, so may the Lord be made known in our lives. Creator God, whose faithfulness is seen in the coming and going of the seasons, whose love is seen in the renewing of the earth. Guard and guide us, keep us and bless us, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.